Hey, what's up, guys? It's Afada Cthulhu here, back again with another video. Uh, this one's going to be aimed at uh, people just starting the game, or maybe it's your first time getting the end game and, and doing uh, the later stuff that is involved. Uh, I myself, when I first started playing, uh, I went to YouTube and watched some videos on the same thing. Uh, and I'm just kind of compiling a bunch of the information that I, I have gathered uh, over a couple of leagues of playing. Uh, I, I'm, I'm still a fairly new player. I don't, I don't know many builds. Uh, but I do know the build that I like to use. And, and I know how to get the game to do uh, what it's supposed to do. Uh, and how to do it efficiently. Uh, so the first thing we're going to talk about is the early game uh, before you get to maps uh, essentially the first 10 acts of the game um, Now this is kind of it kind of works as a tutorial for the the rest of the in-game content which there's tons of uh, Especially with the release of new leagues uh, each league brings uh, new stuff and new content so uh one thing the first thing you're going to want to make sure of is you're going to want to know your build and you're going to want to know uh you know what your build is made for what it's capable of um before you, you know you can wing it you know i hear a lot of people say well that's not fun you know i have to go look at a build guide and uh you know and and just go by a tree someone else has made and do all this and that you can wing it and you might just beat you know the first 10x but once you get later in the game if you plan to continue it's probably gonna not be a good idea to uh, just wing it so what I suggest for you to do if you're just starting out and you haven't even picked out a build yet I suggest you Google uh, you know whatever the current league is like right now it's, it's the Delve League 3.4 uh, so, you know, you'd want to go to Google and type in, uh, starter builds 3.4 budget friendly. Uh, that's going to help you get an idea of what to do. Now, the reason why you want to look it up is because there's tons and tons of stuff that involves around this game. Uh, not only do you have, uh, like your gear that you need to learn about, like what, you know what's good on gears what to be looking for uh, I mean there's tons of mods that you can have and then um, you know then there's stuff like of course the passive tree is humongous and is very overwhelming to new players uh, there's over a thousand nodes on the tree uh, so you're gonna want to study the tree and know what where to go and where to spend your points uh, if you have two monitors uh, a dual setup is good to have just the tree on one monitor and then of course the game on the other tree or on the other monitor so now once you once you got your build picked out and you know what to do like uh, some builds are made for different things uh, some builds are made for farming some builds are made for farming lab uh, so uh, we'll get into lab in a second. Some builds are are made for in-game boss killers like uh, Uber Elder and such. Uh, so it just depends on what you yourself want to do with the game. Uh, now, the, the a lot of the DPS, high DPS builds like the in-game boss killers, uh, they're going to cost a lot. Uh, you're going to need to get some, generate some currency. So that's why a lot of times when a new league starts people uh they they choose league starter builds like mine is actually a league starter build but i just really like the play style so i kind of stick with it uh, i'm playing as a sunder juggernauts that i've kind of rearranged for a better item rarity and item quantity but uh so yeah so know what your build is capable of and know what build you've chosen uh, at the beginning so you when you get to the end and you're like oh but I can't do this and that well you could have known that in the beginning uh, that it's either you can do it or it's gonna be really tough for you uh, now as far as uh, lab lab is kinda like a subclass um, 
once once you get to a certain level you can go go into the, your first lab there's four labs as you can see I have four of these uh, big nodes here and uh, uh, they get progressively harder uh, there's more traps uh, the boss Izaro does more damage um, and, they, and they get bigger the dungeon itself gets larger so but you're gonna want to do this uh, pretty much as soon as possible most builds that I looked at get a pretty substantial buff from their ascendancy when you're looking at your build guide this is your ascendancy uh, you will get three for whatever you choose you'll get three subclasses to choose from uh, that's here my guy is the juggernaut this is the juggernaut uh, little subclass tree so uh, that is what ascendancy means when you're looking at your build guide if you didn't know um, it's talking about doing lab crew lab merciless lab and uber lab uh, if you ever people hear people say uber they're talking about uber lab um, now now that's all about knowing your build and knowing what it's capable of um, something else that's going to help you early in the game if you don't know every I think it's every five or ten levels uh, new flask sizes will drop like you start out with a small life flask a small mana flask ten levels or so and it's going to become a you know larger one large life flask it's fun there's greater life flask and it's grand and then you know until you get all the way up to uh, like a divine life flask at 60 uh, that's when they stop going up so as these come out, uh, as you level, you're going to want to pick these flasks up and, and put the new ones in, take the old ones out. Because if let's say you got 4,000 health like I do, but you're using a small life flask that heals for 70, what, what is 70 going to do on 4,000? You're going to need the bigger flask as you go. Same thing with mana, even though I don't have any mana. Um, you know, if you're using a build that ha uses a lot of mana you're gonna need the man the bigger mana pot uh, to actually do something if we got 623 mana and we're only using a 30 mana pot I mean it's not gonna do anything for you uh, I learned that the hard way when I started playing it almost died in hardcore because I used to play hardcore uh, almost died in hardcore running lab with a buddy of mine Yogi the monk uh, because I didn't upgrade my flask and I'm, I'm getting hit by traps and I'm trying to use these flasks to heal and they're just not healing worth the poot right so I almost lost that character in lab but I made it through uh, but I was traumatized by traps until later on until I figured out just run through them pretty much if you can <laughs> but uh, you know some builds can't do that some builds have to uh, cautiously move through traps uh, jug builds and stuff we, we can just kind of run through traps no problem um, the next thing on the list would be to as you're playing new uh, you're gonna see tons of uniques tons of uniques which are which will have like this brownish color to them uh, all these are uniques um, and you're gonna want to familiarize yourself with the art of these uniques like when they when they drop uh, like like for instance no I want to keep that I was gonna drop it on the ground I guess we have to go out into a map to do that but uh, you're gonna want to familiarize yourself with these uniques as you see them pick them up the first time I would say even if you know most uniques in the game are not worth very much and it's not really worth the time to pick them up and put them up for sale or sell them to the vendor for alchemy shards so familiarize yourself with these uniques so you, you can kind of glance over it as it's laying on the ground and you'll see the image of it and you'll say oh okay that's uh you know that's worth something i should pick it up or that's not worth it i shouldn't pick it up because the more time you waste ident identifying you know these items and, and looking up the price and putting up these these items for very low amounts um, of money you're wasting time when you could be earning some some decent money so you know some actual money 
like I myself, I just picked up this jewel that I have no clue what it is, so I'm gonna have to look it up and see how much it's priced because I don't I don't recognize these two. So that I'm still learning some of the things. I think this one's bad uh, now that I've seen the name of it. The other one I still don't recognize. So familiarize yourself with all the uniques that you see, and once once you do it after a while, you you'll be like, okay, that's um, you know, that's deer stalker boots and they're, they're crap you know just throw them you don't even pick them up because you scrolled over you saw what they look like you know uh, or these are uh, Centrix boots you know shoes whatever they are you know these are bad don't pick them up uh, now you don't want to just sit, look at it and say like uh, like for instance this would say gold ring on the ground until you scroll over and actually see the the image. So you still want to scroll over them because some um, uniques have the same base type. Uh, so you might not know, if, like for instance, uh, if I had a worm molt belt, which I don't. Uh, a worm molt is also a leather belt, uh, but a headhunter, uh, which is one of the most expensive items in the game, is also a leather belt. Uh, so just by seeing leather belt on the ground, a unique leather belt, you, you don't want to just be like, oh, that's not worth it. You want to actually scroll over it and see the, the, uh, the art for it, the image, uh, that that is a worm moat and not a, uh, headhunter as for other things in the game. So familiarize yourself with unique art. Next up is knowing what the orbs actually do. Excuse me and when to spend them and when to save them like when to use them on your items and when to uh, actually just save them uh, now you can see what they do by scrolling over and they're not just currency they actually do eat everything actually does something except for shards they shards build up once you get 20 you'll get one alchemy orb and you know, same thing for alteration shards and transmutation shards. Once you get 20, you'll get one transmutation orb. Uh, <clears throat> but what you want to do is you want to know, like the chromatic orb, you want to know that you can use it to change the colors of your sockets on your gear. Uh, but when when is that appropriate, you know? Like when, when do you need it? Well... <clears throat> Your build guide will tell you what, what skill gems you will need to link and what colors you will need on your gear. So that's when you know to use chromatics. Now early on, you might you might use a couple to fit something in there for leveling that's not on your build guide. But it should usually build guides do have a uh, leveling section. They kind of tell you like, okay, like for instance, I use uh, ground slam until I can get sunder. So you might use something different in the beginning until you can get your actual skill and stuff. Uh, but transmutation shards, um, uh, they upgrade a normal item to a magic item and, and so forth. You can just scroll over and read them. Um, these, early on, these will help you get better flasks. You can use these on flasks uh, to roll them. Like for instance, I rolled this one to get instant recovery and uh you know the curse thing and uh this one i rolled uh to get the staunching which is uh removes bleed so i have an instant heal pot and a remove bleed pot um and while we're speaking on flask real quick i would say it's going to help you if you get a, a quick silver flask of adrenaline uh go to podot trade we'll get into that in a second and, and get one but uh, get you a Quicksilver Flask of Adrenaline. That you know you get 40% increased movement speed from the Quicksilver Flask alone. But when it's a Quicksilver Flask of Adrenaline, you're gonna get 28% or whatever mod down there number uh, on top of that 40%. So you you want to be getting the Adrenaline ones now. Some of your big money is like if you ever seen Exalted Orb don't spend it you know this is a beginner's guide don't just throw it on a random you know piece of headgear trying to get a new random modifiers on it save it this is like the most expensive base currency in the game you know aside from like a mirror of calandra which is you know pretty pretty rare 
uh, chaos orbs uh, is like imagine the chaos orb as the as the dollar uh, like the base currency for how everything else is is based upon like four quarters equals a dollar you know 100 pennies equals a dollar so think of the chaos as a dollar uh, which is is good you want chaos orbs uh, that's how you that's what you use to buy stuff mainly with uh, except for high-end stuff you're gonna be using exalted orbs and um, other things other things like uh, blessed orbs you can use those to reroll your implicit if you don't know what that means uh, if you see I have 20% increased melee damage on the top if that was 10% increased melee damage I could use blessed orbs to try to reroll that and get it to 20% uh, regal orbs will upgrade a magic item which is blue to a rare item which is yellow uh, these are rare glows I don't have any blue blue stuff but uh, uh, basically an item can be white I just mean it's normal rarity uh, normal uh, it could be blue it'll have some modifications on it in fact I'll just take this we'll take a, a transmutation orb which upgrades a normal item to a, uh, a blue item I have one over here already so you can see now well <laughs> I had a prophecy that actually turned it into a rare item so let's uh, see I don't know if I have anything else I can do I got a map we can do a map okay uh, uh, don't have any white maps gotta go over here give me a second I wasn't prepared no but uh let's grab a uh, white map out of here good old beach same thing same thing with armors and stuff uh, as we as well as maps um, and also loot boxes that you see out on the map uh, you can also use orbs on jewels uh, not unique jewels but uh, you know normal magic and rare jewels uh, but anyways this is a white map we use a transmutation orb on it and boom it becomes blue map uh, now to upgrade that to a a uh, rare map we would need to use a regal orb on it but we don't want to do that but what you could do if you wanted to make it if you got a blue map or a blue weapon or piece of armor and you wanted to make it rare you could take a orb of scouring which removes all the modifiers from an item and boom now it's back to a white map then we could take a alchemy orb which upgrades a normal item to a rare item so it's going to go from white to yellow or gold however you want to see it boom now that map is yellow just like a, a weapon would be or anything that you use an alchemy on that is a it goes from normal to to yellow so familiarize yourself with these orbs and, and when is it a good idea to use them and when is it a good idea to save them and uh, that is basically all you need to know for early on in the game uh, you'll learn everything else as far as your uh, like your play style and uh, all that while you're going through the acts uh, so that is it for the beginning like the first 10 acts of the game now you beat in the game you beat Kitaba you know uh, act 10 what do you do now uh, first thing is first if you haven't already I su highly suggest you set yourself up a hideout now I've taken the time to spruce mine up a little bit uh, but none of this is necessary uh, what you really want to make sure you're doing and I actually learned this from uh, Grim, Grimra uh, watching one of his guides uh, you want to make sure that you don't have like your map device here uh, or like your map device way over here and then your stash like way over here and then you got your vendor way over here uh, you don't want that. Now I have Elrion here as a meme, but I don't ever talk to him. But Zana and Navali I have over here because I do talk to. So when I put when I put a map in, let's say for instance I put this map in and uh, 
I go do it. I think they might have reflect on it, so I don't know. I'm not going to hit anything. But um, let's say we were out here looting. We were doing maps, you know. And uh, we head back. And we, but you want to you want to minimize the amount of time uh, that you use uh, in your stash tab, because the more time you spend in your stash tab, the more time or in your hideout, excuse me, the more time you spend in your hideout, the more time you're gonna waste that you could be earning. Now, see, I can click my stash tab and I can click Navali as a vendor. Boom. And uh, all from like the, the right here I don't even have to move and then I can be boom back into the map just like that so that's gonna help you cut down on time yeah it might look cooler if you build this fancy thing where like oh I got a rug over here with my map device and I got you know Navali's got her little hut over here and then my, my guild stash is like you know like uh, you know my stash and guild stash is way back here up in its own private area I mean it might look cool but you're costing yourself time like you might be thinking well it's not gonna be that much time if I just run back here and then run back yeah it's not but when you do it over and over and over and over again that little bits of time adds up it do it adds up and you're costing yourself valuable time and money you could be making and uh, time you could be spending making money and, and getting stuff so um, you know make sure you have at least one vendor close to your map device and uh, your stash tab at least guild the guild stash I mean I keep mine close because you know we we share stuff back and forth or if I see like a leveling item such as a uh, life sprig uh, I'll throw it in there uh, did somebody take that life sprig out I just put a life sprig in there not too long ago I was gonna use that as an example but anyways uh, you know so if I find like uh, or for instance uh, you know the one of my guild members he couldn't do he can't do elemental reflect maps so he puts it in here and I run it uh, if I get a physical reflect map uh, I'll put it in there and somebody will run it because I can't do physical reflect so uh, keep your your stash tab tight or I keep saying stash tab but keep your hideout tight guys you know don't spread it out you're losing time and I would highly suggest keeping the map device close to the waypoint because if the if we set it all up up here and then once I'm full uh, on like let's say six socket items which you can sell for jewelers orbs which we did earlier I would have to run back to here go to town talk to Lonnie wait wait for Lonnie to sell me you know some stuff and then we'd have to run back and it's being really slow right now because I actually just turned it on usually actually actually load these spots a couple of times or once you know it's usually a lot quicker right so then you have to come back here put your jewelers orbs up into your your stash tab then go back into your map you know what I mean so keep your map device and your stuff close to the waypoint so when you have to run back and do stuff it's not going to take you that long so you know so basically organize your hideout for efficiency not for a cool factor you know like it might look cool you got a little fire pit with a a row over there with your stash tab you know but you're costing yourself time uh, secondly uh, once you're at end game, if you haven't already, you made it this far, so you're probably going to play the game, uh, you know, at least a little bit. I would suggest at least getting one premium stash tab if you can afford it. Now, not everybody can buy stuff, so it's not necessary. You can still play the game without this. It is not necessary. Uh, but for me, I, you know, I've got a few extras, right? So but I would suggest at least getting one stash tab uh, premium stash tab so you can easily still sell stuff uh, to Podot trade um, like for instance uh, this tab everything's set at, at 3c I mean I just throw stuff in here we'll get into that later how I, how I do stuff uh, like this is obviously not 3c but uh, 
everything in here. All I have to do, put this in here. Now it's up for sale for 3C. Uh, what I did was I, you click public on your premium stash tab. You right click it. <clears throat> you click public. And then this is set exact uh, price on all items, which is set to 3 chaos. And then uh, it's going to automatically name it. So, but now once I put anything in here, it's going up for 3C. Now there's another kind that you can do. Uh, you can do the same thing, right click, uh, set each item individually priced, which is I can right now, I can right click these items and I can set the exact price I want. I can put it up for 10 chisels or I can put it up for 10 chaos. I mean, it doesn't matter. I can set the price. Uh, so that is why at least having at least one of these is good because let's say you got this axe and this axe like, what if you're a bow build but this axe is worth base without six link on it is like 2x or something and six link it's like 8 to 10x depending on the rolls if you got no way to sell it you're gonna be stuck in trade chat where excuse me no that came out of nowhere I apologize uh, you're gonna be stuck in in trade chat where a lot of people I mean there are some serious traders in trade chat but you're gonna see a lot of like bots and like that are trying to buy currency for way under the level of, of the current rate and stuff like that so uh, you just if you made it the end game at least don't just start the game and say oh I need a premium stash tag if you beat the game the, the first part of the game and you get to the end game where where you know, you, you're looking at maps and stuff. Uh, get you a premium stash tab so you can sell stuff. Recently, a buddy of mine, uh, Rolf, he's a uh, part of my Twitch community. Uh, I told him about selling stuff, and he's like, oh, okay, yeah, I can make some money. You know, I was like, put that stuff in there and sell it, man. You know what I mean? I feel the sneeze coming on. Give me one second. All right, excuse me. I'm burping and sneezing all over you guys. I apologize. At least I could feel the sneeze coming, so I muted, right? I could not. I did not know that burp was coming. But yeah, so uh, premium stash tab. Now, as far as the other tabs go, they're just a. Uh, I mean, they'll simplify some things, but they're really just like the currency tab is actually pretty nice to have. Uh, uh, without this, the currency can get pretty junky. A lot of people like to have a quad stash tab, which is quadruple the size of a normal tab. Uh, like for instance, you would have four times the size of this to put crap in. Junk. Um, you now, a lot of like stuff like this. Don't worry about like I. What I do. Let me explain what I. What I do. Uh, okay, I don't like to sit around and ID stuff and like uh find the price on it like for instance like look at all this this is just one little mess that i've gone through and got now the quill reins and the dark scorn and stuff uh i know i can sell that for maybe 2c uh dark scorn i don't know why i have that but as far as rare items yellow items uh you would have to un-id it or id it now you gotta look at the rolls and be like okay this has got this and that okay and then you gotta price it now this is just one item i picked up you know what i mean there's gonna be hundreds and hundreds of things you pick up so what i've started doing is i put them all in one little place like uh i have these tabs called dump tabs which you, you're gonna want you a dump tab uh these are not you don't buy them these are just ones i've named as dump tab but uh, you take your premium stash tab that you have or if you got more that's great like I have a bunch I can do a bunch of little tabs uh, what I would do is I go through once I'm done looting for the day and running maps you know for a session I'll just go through and ID all this stuff just ID it all like you know just right uh, shift right click and now I can just go down and start un -ID and stuff you know and once you see that it's all unID'd, or once I see that I got it all unID'd, uh, 
then I, what I'll do is I'll put it all up for sale. Like I don't move it. You know, I get my currency stuff out. I get my cards out, uh, my maps, and uh, but other than that, like everything else, I just leave in here, and I'll. That's when I'll put it up for sale. Like uh, this used to be. Where is that? This used to be everything in here was for one chaos. Uh, so I either sold it to another player or once I saw that it wasn't selling I just took it all out and vendored it uh, you know so then this becomes take it off public put it back this is a new dump tab now once I fill it up I'll go back I'll turn it back on public and you know I like to start them off high like I might put it at even at 10 C or the 5C uh, because some jewels and stuff you come across can be worth a lot so I, I like to start them off high that way um, <clears throat> you know people will uh, message you immediately if you've underpriced something but if you let something sit like I have stuff sitting for 3 chaos right now some of this stuff is not worth 3 chaos but some of it you know probably could be like some of these rings and stuff so you let them sit for a little while and then eventually I'll lower it down to two chaos and then one chaos and then if it didn't sell I'll vendor it so that's that's what I've been doing lately uh, like flash selling stuff so I don't have to take the time to ID it now you could be a player that enjoys that uh, IDing stuff pricing it uh, and I know a player that we have a player in our guild who, who loves looking at items and rare items and, and, and play you know pricing them and trying to sell them that could be for you if that's for you then do it hey it's just not for me I like to you know get my loot sold quickly and, and get out and get back to mapping and uh, earning more loot uh, so now let's talk about the atlas the atlas uh, when you first start all this is going to be covered in clouds except for the four corners which are tier one maps uh, which will be white maps normal maps and uh, as you go along uh, you're gonna beat these maps and that is gonna open up other maps now to beat a map uh, consider it beaten uh, you need to kill the boss of the map now you can see it says bonus kill boss of magic or higher version of this map now all tier one through five so this is how you're gonna get the bonus completion uh, for the um, for that map what the bonus completion does is it it raises the chance of you getting a higher tier map from this map instead of getting uh, you know all level ones or tier ones you have a better chance at getting tier twos now and uh, the maps themselves can drop up to one tier higher the bosses can drop up to two tiers higher so you, you want to increase that bonus as much as you can so one through fives are gonna do be do magic maps which are blue maps now once you get past fives and you're in six through tens you're gonna have to do rare maps to get the bonus completion now you can just kill the boss you can and just get the completion but you're gonna want to be doing these bonuses don't don't sleep on the bonuses uh, you're gonna want to be doing them so six through tens do yellow maps uh, rare ones you know take them and alchem make them rare uh, now once you get higher up 11 through 16s you're gonna need to not only do alkit but you're gonna need to use a vol orb on it and corrupt the map to make it uh, to give yourself the ability to um, get the bonus completion like it says kill boss of corrupted rare map so you're gonna have to corrupt it to get that and then you want to you, you want to get as many done as you can um, and once you get to about a hundred you're, you're gonna start seeing some really good map returns uh, of higher tier maps now there's different atlas strategies that people do some people run infinite setup of burial chambers uh, there's videos you can look up uh, if you type infinite sustain uh, you know path of exile on YouTube 
you'll get plenty of tutorials on that we're not going to get too much into that uh, I would say as a new player if it's your first time getting here I would say just try to experience everything that way you know what your build is capable of in maps so next league when it's fresh and new you're gonna know like you know what you can do what maps you shouldn't do maybe you need a melee build friend to do this or you need a high dps build friend to, to do this other map and then but you know you're good to go like on you know whatever bone crypt you're like oh i've done bone crypt it's that boss that's so and so so if it's your first time here i wouldn't say worry about strategy atlas strategy too much uh i would say just do everything you can and get the bonus completions for them uh, <clears throat> And you can see here, I have 147 out of 159. I have a 47% chance for maps to drop two tiers higher. Each bonus objective you complete increases this by 1%. So, uh, I have done 147 bonus uh, completions. I still have some uniques out there and one more T16 to do. Uh, that map is expensive and really hard for my build so I'd probably have to hire like hire somebody to do it for me uh, so you know do it all now you, you, you might be wondering well how do I roll these maps what do I do well let's get into that um, let's uh, for instance we're going to take a white map you know we said we wanted all white maps to be blue these are one through fives so use the transmutation orb on it uh, we want these to be uh, yellow maps. We want them to be rare. So we get the bonus completion. We're going to use a alchemy orb on it. Now this is carcass. And I'm not going to waste my carcass map. I'm actually going to use chisels on it. Uh, you can use chisels to increase the quality and the quantity of a map. Uh, increasing the quantity of a map as you can see it has 20% item quantity right now only the maps quantity affects how many map drops you're gonna get not your gears quantity like this this expensive necklace uh, amulet I have on it's not gonna affect how many maps I'm getting only the maps quantity is going to affect how many maps you get so uh, that's why with this being a T15 I didn't want to just out it and then potentially waste it right uh, I want to at least make sure I'm getting the 20% out. But now we want to alk it. And there's actually a physical reflect on that, so I'm going to reroll real quick. Uh, it's pretty low. I'm actually going to reroll one more time. Don't uh, if you're new, you don't have a lot of currency. Don't be doing this. You know, you want to. If you can do the map, you want to run it and uh, not reroll them a thousand times. Uh, I am not getting good rolls here. Well, the, I want at least 70% without any reflect on it. <laughs> but it being a T15, I don't, I don't care about the money I'm spending. I want map drops. So. Uh, that looks great right there. We'll roll with that one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a bald orb. And then we're going to evolve that. Now, what that did for this particular map is it made it unidentified. It won't always do that. Um, that's just a potential what could happen. But it will add more mods to it. But if it's corrupted and rare, and it's 11 through 15, you're going to be able to uh, get the bonus completion. And like I said, don't... Don't worry about re-rolling it like I just did. Uh, now, how do you how do you want to go about rolling your maps? Like, what well, what you don't want to do is roll them individually. Even though we just did, but that was just an example. What I do when I go to actually run these maps, uh, what I'll do is I make sure I chisel them up. If I got chisels, I chisel red maps. I don't really worry about it until I get to red maps, but uh, I start chiseling them up. I make sure you want to apply chisels first because if you apply them later it uses more chisels so you want to apply them before you out them then I will let's give a few more outs out then I will 
like let's say I had a whole line of maps I would chisel them all at one time don't just do one put it in run it come back out roll another map and then I would go down and just alk all these okay now my build can't really do it cannot do physical reflect and it really can't do elemental reflect unless I take hatred and herald of Asha so what I do is I'll type reflect now you see these ones on the right were highlighted. I know these have elemental reflect on. That's why I put them over here. But these are good to go. They didn't highlight. They don't have reflect on them. So they are good to go. Um, and take a little bit more out of these now. You don't have to vol your stuff. But I suggest when you get to red maps, you probably want to. So you're, you're getting more quantity. But then you want to vol, vol, vol. And we got reflect. What kind of reflect? Okay, it's only elemental reflect. So I can still run that map, but I'm going to move it over to the side because this is where I keep my elemental reflex. But now I know, like for instance, let's say all these down were rolled and none of them highlighted. Now I know I can just run these maps and I don't have to read them every time. They're good to go. Uh, that one got some decent stuff on it. Coliseum's a good map as well. Uh, so you want to roll all your maps at once and not one at a time that's why I actually keep two tabs like this for maps I keep one for my rolled maps that I'm running and then I keep one for the new red maps or if I'm on yellows new yellow maps that I get and then once I run out of these oops once I run out of these oh I did it twice once I run all the maps that I have rolled then I'll go and roll all the ones that I've gotten and then I'll switch this will become the first tab and this is the second tab and repeat so that that is going to save you lots of time if you're running a map you go out here you get a map you, you finish this map you know like you, you run up here and you finish you kill a bunch of stuff and you're like ooh I got a map and I'm done with this one you know and now you, you pour it out you go back and you get another map out and you're like okay let me roll this uh, map here so you alk it, you chisel it, you alk it, you vol it uh, it's going to cost you a lot of time so you don't want to be doing that you do not want to be doing that um, so roll all your maps at once guys that you have that you plan on running roll them all at once don't roll them individually like for instance think about look at all these maps like right here if I took all these and I ran them one at a time and I rolled them one at a time like just think about that math of, of seconds and, and minutes that are adding up that I took to take this one out to roll it and then I put it in the map device and then I run it and now I get this one out and I roll it and then I put it in the map device and I run it, it it's, it's just really bad don't want to do that. Roll all your maps at once. So we'll just put a, uh, this junk. I'm getting my balls and chisels back up. Uh, so what is next? Uh, lastly, we're just going to talk about how to make uh, currency. Uh, starting out. <clears throat> of course, obviously, there's big ticket items that you can get, like this, for instance, or this, uh, you know. But those are depending on drops, and you're not always going to get good drops. You know, like I, I played for nine hours yesterday, and I don't think I got a single good drop, but I still made like 2x in currency. Um, because I was, you know, generally just, you know, selling some stuff that I picked up using the methods we talked about. Uh, and also, selling currency that I don't use. Uh, like, for instance, you may you may need fusing orbs to try and link something. I don't need any more fusing orbs. So, what I do is I sell all my fusing orbs. Um, you now, how do you get a bunch of fusing orbs? Well, there's a big percentage of the currency that you get from max, maps that actually come as six socket items. Uh, just six, uh, like we sold earlier, you saw that axe that I sold, and I got seven jeweler's orbs. 
you want to pick up every six socket item you see because that is a lot of currency that you are leaving behind so uh, what you do is once you get you don't want to do this every time you, you get some jewelers or once you get enough you know I'm just doing this as an example um, want to go to town whatever town and you want to talk to a vendor uh, I do all mine from Lonnie you want to turn jewelers orbs into fusing orbs see I just made three fusings so now I'll just go back and put them back uh, but when I do this I normally make like 50 fusings or whatever I, I've just have done this recently and sold a bunch so I don't really have a bunch now but make sure you are turning picking up those six socket items and selling them to a vendor to get seven jewelers orbs apiece uh, fusings or fusing orbs are normally about you get two to one two to one chaos so if you turn in two six socket items that's going to yield you 14 jewelers orbs now jeweler orbs are four from the vendor they're four to one fusing so that is going to give us three fusings right there just by picking up those those three two sockets we've essentially made uh you know like a chaos or more and you're going to see once you get in the maps and later on you're going to see tons of these six sockets like i pick up tons of them tons of them during a session and I'll usually end up with about two to three hundred jewelers orbs by the time I get done and I turn them into fusing orbs and then I sell the fusing orbs to other players uh, if you if you're not using sextants uh, if you don't like to use sextants on your maps sextants sell very well people use sextants so you can sell them uh, if you have already used uh, got all your gems up to 20% that you want GCP or like always one to one C so they easily that's six C right there um, and just things like that maybe you have an abundance of chisels you, you know maybe you don't chisel uh, sell chisels uh, currency is currency you're gonna make money you know selling this stuff it's kind of hard to sell transmutation orbs alteration orbs and chance orbs because they drop everywhere uh, but chromatics sell, fusing sell, some people sell in jewelers so they don't have to convert them themselves uh, regret orbs sell, vol orbs uh, are more expensive than chaos so they definitely sell uh, alchemy sell because a lot of people use alchemies when they're rolling maps and uh, regals, I mean well blessed don't really sell too good uh, regals sell easily uh, divine orbs uh, are usually pretty expensive I don't have any right now uh, but last time I sold one, I think it was like 12 to uh, 1 to 12 C. Uh, so divine orb sell, and this is just a way to make currency uh, when you're not getting the big drops that you can sell uh, for like 2x or whatever. Uh, you can sell ex if you need chaos early on. You're gonna need some probably to get your atlas completed, and you might have to buy some maps. You might have to buy some alchemy orbs or whatever uh, if you get an exalted orb and you need chaos don't sit on that exalted orb and then not be running the maps you need to be running spend that money you're gonna earn it back uh, so and then otherwise just you know like I said use your premium stash tab or however many you got to sell stuff to other players and you will uh, and get like I said you'll see in mine you'll see crap like this because mine were dump tabs that I didn't really go through I usually try to grab the currency out but sometimes I miss it right so there is stuff like this in here like this card I mean I, I just throw that in my cards but um, but this one's actually not for sale yet so that, that's why if we look at one that's actually up for sale I mean it's like no currency in here no cards in here uh, there's jewels and gems and gear uh, but other than that, I, I take it all out and I keep it, do what I need to with it. The rest of it, sell it, sell it. Uh, and this, this is uh, this stuff will actually help you uh, if you sat here and watched all of this. 
for about an hour. Uh, this stuff will help you out. So uh, I hope you guys have learned something. I hope you enjoyed the video. Minus my burping in your ear. I apologize. Um, like and subscribe, guys. I I'll try to produce more comment or um, produce more uh, content, not comments. You guys produce the comments. Uh, I'll try to produce more uh, content as I get ideas for videos and uh, when new patches come out and stuff. And uh, you, your best way of seeing that when it comes out is to subscribe and hit the little bell so you get the notification. Uh, so thanks for watching, guys. Comment down below uh, what you think about this, if it helped you out any. Uh, feedback is always welcome. You know, if you want to troll, that's fine. I, you know, I've been a streamer for uh, almost four years now. I'm used to the trolls. I ain't worried about it. But for the people that don't troll and actually watch the content and all that and enjoy it, I uh, really appreciate it. And I hope to hear from you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Peace.